What's up, everybody? Welcome to Pear Timber, Pear Deck for Related Arts. We are so excited to have you here tonight for this special edition Pear Deck webinar, talking about Pear Deck for music, art, PE, and drama. We are so excited to work with you. Uh, my name is Gina Cooper. I'll introduce ourselves here. My name is Gina Cooper. I am a regional partnership manager with Pear Deck. Um, I spent my last two years before I joined Pear Deck as a high school technology coordinator in districts, in a district here in Central Ohio. And before that, I spent about five years as a blended learning and tech integration consultant at districts all over the Midwest. And so this is all in my wheelhouse, everything that we're doing with remote learning and hybrid learning. And I have an amazing team of educators here to join me tonight. And I'm going to let them each introduce themselves as well. Hi, my name is Carla Gannam, and I'm a middle school art teacher. So this is my 10th year teaching art, and I started in the elementary level. So I, we got some really cool stuff to show you for all of the levels of art. And I'm also a tech coach. So I visited Gina down in Columbus this past February to learn more about Pear Deck, and it was love at first sight. And I will tell anyone that wants to listen all about Pear Deck and how to use it in your classroom. Awesome, Jen. I am Jen Lennox Kidioni. That's a mouthful. My students call me Mrs. LC. I teach <laughs> middle school music um, in Pickerington, Ohio, and I am going into year twenty of teaching music. I can't believe it. I've been using Pear Deck for about two or three years, and I love it. I've used it in all different um, elements in my classroom, and I post a lot of my. Uh, instructional materials and tutorial videos um, on my YouTube channel, as well as my podcast, which is called Music with Mrs. LC. So if you're looking for anything and you want some great free resources, check that out. And I am so excited to be here tonight. Thank you, Gina, for inviting me. We're going to do some really great things. I can't wait to show everyone the new templates. And I'm Shannon Fish. Uh, this is my 18th year of teaching visual art. Um, and I am currently teaching at Lancaster High School in Lancaster City School District, um, which is in Ohio. I know every state like has a Lancaster, but we're in Ohio and we say it Lancaster, not Lancaster. So you yeah, <laughs> know if people are from here or not. Um, and uh, Pear Deck, um, I was introduced to at a, a PD session actually that Gina had at our school and immediately fell in love with it. Um, the possibilities with the arts are endless and I'm super excited to show you our new templates um, just for visual art uh, tonight. And past that, I'm a mom, two little girls. Um, I'm married to a woodworker, so we have sawdust all over the house all the time and I just have messes everywhere. <laughs> That's awesome. Thank you ladies for joining us tonight. We're super excited. I forgot to tell you, um, part of the reason I was passionate about related arts and really working with Pear Deck to bring this to you was that I was a music teacher in another life. It feels like it was a lifetime ago with all of my experiences ago, but experiences, but I was a music teacher. And so I'm very passionate about making this available to all of our students. So here's what we're going to do today. So we're going to learn how to build a Pear Deck lesson in less than five minutes. I recommend that you just watch, learn, take some notes. So you're going to learn how to build a Pear Deck lesson in less than five minutes. Anybody like to save time? Like time was one thing my teachers always asked for more of that I can't give you more of, but I might be able to save you some. And so we're going to talk about that today. We're going to explore the teacher and the student views. Now, I'm just going to say this right now. We're not going to have you joining the Pear Deck as a student live because there are like a thousand of you here and that might not work so well with technology. So I have some people that have joined already that I already have some students loaded, but you will be able to get to this. We can send out a self-paced deck. There's a bit.ly going out with these slides that you can follow along with, but I will be showing you the teacher views and the student views as well. So you'll get to see what this looks like from every side. Then we're going to look at the new related arts templates. Woo -woo. And then at the end, my goal is to leave you about 10 minutes for some Q&A. So if you have some questions, tweet. By the way, all of our Twitter handles were there. They're in the bit.ly link on the slide. I'll put them up again at the end. So we would love for you to follow us on Twitter as we share out a bunch of the things that we're learning and doing together. All right, so this is how we make a Pear Deck lesson. 
in Google Slides. You will notice that we are in this familiar environment of Google Slides. So if you know how to use Google Slides or you have existing Google Slides that you've already created that you use with your students, you are like 90% of the way there, away there to using Pear Deck. We do integrate with Microsoft PowerPoint as well. So if you're a Microsoft school, um, it's an add-in for Microsoft. And so don't, we're not gonna leave you out. Um, just know that a couple of the functions are a little bit different and you can reach out to us if you need anything from there. All right, so the step one to making a Pear Deck lesson is to open the Pear Deck add-on. So you just go into Google Slides, you open your slideshow, you go to add-ons, you go to Pear Deck for Google Slides add-on and open the Pear Deck add-on. So this is a little bit of Pear Deck 101 and how to use it and how it works with your students. And you will notice that it's gonna open right here, right within Google Slides. So we can do all of our functioning right here, okay? If you install the Pear Deck Power Up, which is right here, it puts it right in your menu bar and it allows your GIFs and animations to work in your slides. So that's really, really nice feature to have. So install the Pear Deck Power Up as well. All right, step two. That's step one. Step one's done. Check. Told you. Saving you some time. All right. So step two is that we're going to add interactive slides from our library, which, by the way, includes the related arts templates, or create your own custom questions. So if you have things that are existing, you can actually use that. Use Pear Deck with your existing slides. And I'll show you how to do that in a second. All right. So we're going to talk about the template library first. Now, I'm going to open up the template library. And we have seen some really cool things come through since school started. Teachers tweeting out about how they are um, starting a lesson, like they're taking attendance with an activity slide. <gasps> what? Attendance can be interactive? Absolutely. And so we have all these templates built already for beginning, during, and the end of the lesson. Critical thinking, social emotional learning. Guys, this is so important that we conduct with our students on a social emotional level right now. And especially in the arts, we know that we have a different relationship with students. And it's really important that we have that. So we have some ideas here. We're not going to talk about those tonight, but I'm, I just wanted to point those out. And then I know you have friends that teach kindergarten and first grade math, science, social studies, world languages, and ELA. Pear Deck is for them too. So I just wanted to let you know those were all there. And then also we have the related arts templates, which you can get from our template website. And we'll show you that here in a little bit. But let me show you, a lot of you are doing things like bell ringers and warm-ups with your students, right? We're doing some bell ringers. We're doing some warm-ups. We're getting their brains to start working. So all we have to do if we want to, let's say this is an existing presentation that I already have, right? This is an existing presentation. I already have it. I just want to add some activity to it. I can just click on the beginning of the lesson and I can go through and look at a couple of these slides, like draw or type two things you already know about today's topic. Maybe that's Mozart. Maybe that's abstract art. Maybe that's whatever it is, you can use this slide, okay? For today's intents and purposes, maybe I wanna say, what do you wonder about um, this musical uh, star? Or, you know, what do you wonder about classical music? Or what do you wonder about um, exercise and healthy bodies? What do you wonder about those things if you're a PE teacher that's joining us? Look, all I did was click on that template. And for you happy clickers, it's just one click. You don't even have to double click, okay? So no double clicking, just click on it one time and it dropped right into my presentation as if I created it from scratch. Cool. So now I can customize this instead of what do you wonder about today's topic? I could specifically ask, what do you wonder about Pear Deck? All right. Now I can also take this guy. Um, how many of you, and I know this is going to bring a grin to your faces, even though I can't see you, how many of you have your own bitmojis? Yes, like you've created your Bitmoji classrooms, all right? So you could take that guy out and put your own Bitmoji in, personalize it a little bit. And guys, in about 10 seconds, you have this completely personalized slide that was made for you. And you can use that in your classroom. I'm going to leave that guy in there because I haven't had time to get my Bitmoji set. But um, but you can do that. I said it would take me 20 minutes just to figure out how to do the blue, the blue background with the pretty cloud. So that's all done for me. And I have this beautiful slide to use with my students that's visually appealing. So, all right, 
The next thing I want to show you is how to take an existing slide and turn it into a Pear Deck. All right. So let's say this is actually one of Carla's slides that she uses with her students that we're going to show you a little bit later. But this is a slide that she just used on paper or up on the smart board and have one or two students come draw a couple of the shapes, you know, but she was getting a formative assessment from one or two kiddos, not every kid. So we wanted to be able to still use this with our students now that we're remote or hybrid or heck, even in class, guys, we were designed as a as an engagement tool for in-classroom instruction. We just happen to be amazing for remote learning or hybrid learning or whatever situation you end up in. And so we took this slide and watch. I want my students to draw, right? Here's our different custom slides. We have open-ended response, multiple choice, number slides, website slides, and we'll dig into these a little bit later, drawing and draggable. OK, so if I want my students to draw on this elephant, what kind of slide am I going to make it? You can put it in your comments or the chat. Yes, a drawing slide. So watch. All I have to do is click on draw. Wait a couple seconds for Perry to do his happy little dance. We wobble, wobble, but they don't fall down. All right. By the time you sing that, it'll be there. OK, and this is now a Pear Deck drawing slide like mind blown, right? That was it. That's all I had to do to make this into a drawing slide and give my students a plethora of tools, which we will show you in just a little bit, okay? So just wanted you to know that that was there and available, okay? The last little thing that I'm gonna show you in Pear Deck is something that we just added this summer. We we're really excited about it is this little button. Like, have you ever tried to record audio onto a Google slide? Yeah, pretty complicated process, right? <laughs> it takes forever. It's like 20 steps. So we added this add audio button, which is really exciting. So all I do is click add audio to slide. And now I can actually upload audio or record. So I can upload if I'm a music teacher. I can upload any kind of listening example that I want my students to listen to. And it's going to play right within the Pear Deck. So they don't have to open 85 tabs. OK, so that's a really great way to use this. Or I can record instructions for my students. So maybe I'm a PE teacher and I want to say, hey, guys, try this exercise and um, try this exercise. And then on the next slide, write down how many times you were able to do it. And then the next couple of days, I just go in and I might do a couple of different exercises. And then at the end, I can actually go in and see, compare their data from the beginning of the quarter to the end of the quarter and how much better they get with time. So check this out. I'm going to record these directions. All I have to do is click record. Hey, guys, you're doing an awesome job so far. On the next few slides, you're going to work through these at your own pace. Do your best, answer all of them, and stop at the stop sign. I'm really proud of you. Keep up the great work. Pause. Then I can resume it, delete it. I can start over, whatever. I can click Save. I can play it back to make sure it sounds OK. And then check this out. I just click Add Audio to Slide. I just click Add Audio to Slide. Give it a second to think. And poof. The audio is on the slide. This is your visual cue that there is audio. We did not do autoplay because if you're doing a live session with your students and this goes to autoplay, <laughs> you're going to have like 30 screens in your class playing it at the same time. OK, so we did not do autoplay for a reason. Um, if you teach, you know, any middle schoolers who are oblivious to everything. Well, it's not even a middle school. It's just everybody. All right. Then you can make this obnoxiously huge, you know, <laughs> very obvious that there's audio on the slide. You can make it tiny and put it down in the center. OK, so that's it, guys. That is how you create a Pear Deck. We did step one. We did step two. That's it. That's how you create a Pear Deck and badoosh, we're done. All right. If I wasn't talking so much, it probably would have been five minutes, I promise. OK, so the last step that we have to do is actually to start our lesson. All right. When you go to start your Pear Deck lesson, you're going to come up here and you're going to click this green start lesson button. Do not click the white present button or you're just going to get regular old Google Slides. And no longer do you have to go in and make a copy of your slides for every student so they don't mess yours up, OK? You don't have to do that at all. We're just going to give them a link, OK? So when you push the green Start Lesson button, the way you know you did it right is it's now going to ask you, do you want to run a student-paced lesson or an instructor-paced lesson? Yes, you can do this both ways. So you can do a completely asynchronous lesson, or you can do a completely 
teacher led lesson. And later on, I'm going to show you how to toggle between the two, which is really exciting. Okay. So I'm going to, for today's intents and purposes, I'm going to launch an instructor paced activity. And I've already got one up and running. So when you do that, your projector screen will come up with a code. I'll show this to you quickly. Do not join this Pear Deck. All right. And it's going to give them a six letter code, or you can copy the link and give them a link. Okay. So it gives them a six letter code to log in. You can share it directly to Google Classroom. Okay. You can share it directly to Google Classroom, or you can, um, or you can post the link anywhere. So if you use Canvas or Schoology or anything like that, by the way, we integrate with Schoology and Canvas now. Woo -woo. All right. So just a couple of notes about how to get your students into this. Assigned to Google Classroom. They can also go to joinpd.com and enter your six letter code or you can just give them a link. All right. So we're going to start here and I've given this to my students. So my students are on their student screen. So students who are live in our session, I would like you to answer what you wonder about Pear Deck. What do you wonder about Pear Deck? Now you can see, I can see the answers coming in live and in real time. So I've got some questions on here. Can I give feedback to my students? How can I use it in my classroom? How can it support related arts classes? Why is it so important? Ooh, we're going to talk about that. Why is it named Pear Deck? I love this question. It's really a terrible story. I need to come up with a better one. Um, Michael and Riley, our CEO and our chief educator, like they were teachers who created Pear Deck because they knew that every student needed a voice. And it was about pairing. Here's Perry, by the way, this is our mascot, Perry, pairing with students and it's a slide deck. So there's the answer to that question. OK, so all of those of those minds who want to know, there you go. So I can see all my students responses coming in live and in real time, live and in real time. And then I can say, OK, guys, let's go to the next question. All right. How much do you know about Pear Deck? How much do you know about Pear Deck? All right, I'm going to give my students a second to answer. And when I show the responses, notice I can also still see them coming live and in real time. And this kind of works like a polling system. So it like a clicker or a poll or anything like that. So we don't have a poll specifically, but multiple choice works just fine. And check this out. All of these answers are anonymous. Guys, this is formative assessment to inform your instruction. All right. If A is the only right answer, do I need to reteach this to my class? Oh, yeah. <laughs> We're going to need to review this information, right? If A is the only wrong answer and B, C, and D are all correct, do I need to reteach this to my class? No, I don't. They've got it. And I'm going to pull this one student aside. Now, um, there are three different views of Pear Deck. And I'm going to have Carla tell us. So Carla is mostly in person at her school district. Jen is hybrid and Shannon is all virtual. So we've got all three situations completely represented here. So Carla is going to talk about the three views of Pear Deck and quickly tell us how she uses it in her classroom. OK, so this slide that we have up right now is a perfect description of the three views. So you see the students there on their tablet or their Chromebooks, whatever they have in your room. So they're all logged in and they see the student view, the slide that you created. Um, up on the projector, you'll see the projector view. So that's cool because the students can see it larger. And if you want to display the results like Gina showed, you can see the results live um, as they come in. And the thing about when you're in projector view, say my students are logging in with their Gmail address, it's not going to show any of the names or any of that when you're putting it on projector mode. So the third view, as Gina refers to as the teacher superpower view, is the teacher dashboard. So that is something that I log into either on my phone or my iPad, and I can kind of circle around the room and look at the answers as they're coming in from each individual kid. And I can see the names. I can actually even star um, great responses that I might want to put on the projector, or I could delete responses or block someone. So I have the power to do a lot of different things, but more or less just see everything that's happening. Every keystroke that the student makes. I had a student tell me the other day, she can see everything we're doing. Um, so I love it. I just, I preach about it and it's so fun. And it's, you know, instead of one kid going up to the whiteboard and drawing a shape, you have 25 of them doing it at the same time. So those are the three views that I use inside the classroom when we are here. So going on to Jen, who's going to talk about hybrid. Yes. So I've been 
hybrid so far this year. I've only ever done live lessons up until we went into um, the lockdown last year. But the great thing about using Pear Deck um, during the hybrid model is that you can use your student paced function and you can decide which way you're going to do it. Sometimes students are virtual, maybe for the first part of the week, and then they come in the second part of the week. In that scenario, you can use um, the student pace to do like a formative assessment ahead of them coming in. Or if you might see your students live in person and then you they go virtual for the second part of the week, you can use Pear Deck in the student pace to do a reflection or some sort of uh, exit ticket from the lesson. So there's different ways you can use it depending on your hybrid model, but it's a great way to just gauge where students are at in their in their journey. And Shannon. Oops, Shannon, you're muted. I don't remember muting myself. I do that all the time. My, my no students worries. are like, Mrs. Fish. Okay. So anyway, so I do have some full, full virtual classes, which you think I'd know how to unmute myself because of that. Um, I also have some that are face-to-face. Um, -face. We're in this really bizarre situation where I'm at. Um, but in the virtual setting, the really fantastic thing about Pear Deck is that I can make individual connections with all of those students, even though they're just the little bitty picture on my screen. Um, the social emotional learning pieces, um, even just the how are you feeling today with the little smiley faces when they first log in um, really tells me a lot just right off the bat. Um, and I, I told the kids I was gonna be talking to you tonight. I said, what should I tell them? And they said, tell them it's awesome and they all need to do it, it's fun. No longer boring <laughs> presentations. Um, with of course, you know, mine were never boring anyway. Um, so that's amazing. Yeah. You heard it, people, from the students' mouths themselves. So that's one thing I loved about Pear Deck. I've worked with over 80 technology programs in the past few years, and Pear Deck was the one that both teachers and students just love. They pick up on it, they use it, and they're and once a teacher sees another teacher using it, they're like, hey, I want that. And it's not like a you have to. It's a this is really engaging. Oh, by the way, we also earned our digital promise badge. So we are completely backed by learning science. This is not just a fun, cutesy toy. This is impactful. In education, student outcomes and achievement, social emotional learning, and just fun education too. So, all right, I'm going to dig into the teacher dashboard. Thank you, ladies, so much. Um, I'm going to dig into the teacher dashboard just a little bit. So, those three views we talked about. This is what I call, yes, Carla, the teacher superpower. All right, but you got to raise your hands when you do it. All right, like you're a superwoman. All right, so this is the teacher superpower screen. All right. Behind me is the projector screen. So in an online environment, your projector screen is your Google Meet screen or your Zoom screen that you're sharing. Okay, so you can see that. That's how I'm running this here. Now check this out. On the teacher dashboard, I can see all of these answers coming in live and in real time before I show them to the rest of my class right? So that's really nice. Carla mentioned this too. If I've got 30 answers coming in live and in real time, and I only have time to talk about two or three of them, I can star a couple. I can say, great answer. Danielle, good job. Caroline, good job. And then check this out. When I go to show those responses, they're the only three that come up. So I can pick out a couple of exemplary answers or maybe even a wrong answer or a different opinion than everyone else. And we can have discussion around that, okay? So, but to the rest of the class, it's completely anonymous. It's completely anonymous. So um, they don't know who said what, and this fosters some really, really awesome classroom engagement because it takes that risk away from them. So that's what that star does. All right, I'm gonna hide the responses again. And let's say um, Emma was the first person to show up. So Emma gets to be our troublemaker in our class. All right, Emma has decided to say something inappropriate about a classmate or this song sucks. Or, you know, um, maybe we're on a drawing screen and they've drawn something inappropriate on their, on their screen. Yeah, y'all know it's going to happen like once or twice, right? But all I have to do is go here. Now, if I'm physically in the classroom, like Carla's situation, I'm going to use, I'm untethered from my computer. I have my dashboard up on my phone or something like that. I'm going to walk over to Emma and I'm going to tap her on the shoulder and say, hey, this is not an appropriate, um, this is not an appropriate answer. Please fix this. Okay. If I can't get to her, I can actually just click on the three dots by her name and I can hide her response and then watch what happens when I show it. 
when I show the responses for my whole class, notice Mike's is now the first one that comes up. Yeah. So it just hit it from the class. Guys, this is like the eyes in the back of your head. That's what my students called it when I was using it in the classrooms that I was coaching in. Like the teacher has eyes in the back of their head. Yeah, we totally do. And they'll test you a couple times on it and then and then they and then they won't. Like they'll just know. Like uh, I think Shannon said they can see everything. <laughs> you know, they know what you're doing, all right? So the other piece I want to show you now I'm going to switch to a different screen really quickly. I want to show you the student screen. Okay. So when a student logs into a lesson, it's going to ask them how they're feeling. Okay. So did you notice on the teacher dashboard that I have those emojis? Now, everybody here works at Pear Deck. We're all pretty happy, right? So, but if I walk into my classroom and 25 out of my 30 kids have red and yellow faces, I know that I've got to do something to get them ready for learning. But guys, how many of you have one or two kids in your class that will never tell you when something's wrong? You have those kiddos that are going to come up to you and be like, yo, my dog died last night. I'm out. Don't plan on me participating in class, right? But then you have those kids that are going to come in with burdens and they may not tell you, but they will answer that little emoji face. And if you have one student with a red face, it's really important to be able to engage with that student, okay? And connect with them and just maybe they just need a little extra attention that day or whatever it is, okay? So check this out though. I want to show you this as a student. I'm on a student screen now. So I'm just going to say how amazing are related arts teachers. Yeah. Okay. So I've answered as a student and now as the teacher, you will see that I've had this answer. Gina's answer came in live and in real time, I saw it come in. Now watch this. I can actually leave individualized feedback. Ha <laughs> ha. Yes. So check this out. I can click on the little chat box and I can say, Awesome idea. Can you expand on that? Maybe I can say, oh, I see that you drew the uh, F. Can you go try and draw a G instead? Or I can say, oh, great job on, um, you know, great job on eating healthy this week. Um, you know, tell me three recipes you want to try next week or whatever it is that you're talking about. Um, it's a really good idea to be able to give them feedback. Now watch what happens. This is my student screen back here. This is my teacher screen. Watch. I'm going to send feedback to Gina and boom, like in milliseconds, I now have feedback from my teacher. Cool. So check this out as the student, I can now go in. I can see all the feedback. I can mark that I read it, and then I can go in and fix my answer, expand on the idea, okay? So a really, really great way to be able to connect with your students, all right? So that's the bas basic things about wondering about Pear Deck. That's your teacher superpower screen. I've got the power, right? Like we have the power, you know? Guys, this is also your attendance. Like all I have to do is click on this and I can see every single student that logged into my lesson, right? And I can also scroll down to the bottom and I can see who didn't answer my questions, right? So I can go check in with those students who haven't responded yet, all right? So that's the power of the teacher dashboard and what that can do for you when you're connecting with your students. All right, so now I wanna dive in a little bit. First, I wanna say that Pear Deck gives every student a voice and every teacher deeper insight into your students' learning. Not just your three kids who raise their hand all the time, but every single student in your classroom. Yes, in art, music, PE, and drama, that is important for you guys too. Um, and so we are going to dive into how to do student paced mode. Now, I told you that we can do teacher mode. We've been doing teacher mode so far, right? Where I am pulling you through as a student through every slide. You were answering the questions. And when I move slides, you move slides, right? So check out my student screen so that you can see this. My student is on the same screen as I am. Okay. Now we can toggle. So there's three views of Pear Deck, right? Student view, projector view and teacher superpower. That's what I'm just going to call it. Okay. It's a teacher superpower. All right. There are also three ways to use Pear Deck. So you can use it in instructor paced mode, like we've been doing so far. You can use it in asynchronous mode or student paced mode, where I can just assign this whole lesson for them to do on their own. Like Jen said, her beginning of the week, people are doing a preemptive formative assessment, like a pre-check pre-test. All right. And then at the end of the week, she's doing a reflection for them. And they're doing that totally in self-paced mode. My favorite way to use Pear Deck is you can actually toggle between the two. So I could start a lesson in teacher pace mode. Like if you have limited time with them online or limited face-to-face -face time, I want to get them new content, right? I want to foster that classroom discussion. I want to do those things with some formative checks along the way. 
all right? And some informational things. And then I could just build practice into the rest of the deck, turn it into student pace mode and let them work on their own through the rest of the time. All right, so I'm gonna demonstrate that now. So check this out. All you have to do is click on the three dots in the bottom right-hand corner and turn on student pace mode. All right, that's all I have to do. Turn on student pace mode. Now it's gonna give you a warning and it's gonna say, look out, you're letting them loose. And I'm gonna say, okay, I got it. I understand, okay? Look out, you're letting them loose. Now watch what happens when I go to my student screen. I now, it took me back to the beginning, but that's okay. Um, I now have arrows where I can scroll through the slides now at my own pace. OK, so I can now go through these at my own pace and work through them. So so now we get to dig in to Pear Deck templates for the art teachers. All right. So Carla's going to start us off with arts for middle school and elementary age kiddos and uh, talk about these. And I'm going to be here on the student screen and showing you what this looks like from the student screen and the teacher dashboard. Okay, first of all, I can't tell you how long I've been waiting to see the Paradox templates for art. It's what I ask every single time I attend a live session or a webinar. Um, so this is so exciting to see this come to fruition. So this was just the slide that we had pulled up earlier when Gina showed you how to turn that into a drawing slide. So this is a great formative assessment. This is great for the younger kids. I actually just did something similar to this with my sixth graders. Um, so we're doing realistic drawings of their spirit animals. So I was trying to teach them how to do texture on animals, how to draw the fur. So we did this together and I had one image of a cat and they all had to make short lines. So they were playing around with the different drawing tools and the size of the drawing tool and the color and all of that. So this is awesome um, for all ages. You can change out the picture, do it however you want. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the overlay mode, which is awesome. That looks. Great. This is we the teacher dashboard view, just so um, you guys can see what this looks like when it comes in. You can see all of the answers on top of each other to see how they're doing, which is really fun. This one turned out great. <laughs> right. It's got measles and ice cream cone on his head, maybe. Yep. Um, all right. So moving on to the next slide. And this is one of the new Pear Deck templates for the arts. So in the next slide, you'll see a piece of work, a piece of artwork, which I'm is going to be the Mona Lisa. And the students are going to circle which museum you would find the Mona Lisa in. So this could be used as a pre-assessment. They could use process of elimination thinking, well, I've been to the Cleveland Museum of Art and I don't remember seeing it. Or I feel like it might be in Europe somewhere. So that Louvre thing might be the one. So you can do that, or it could be at the end of a lesson where they learn about art history and they could be like, oh, it's at the Louvre for sure. I know about that, or I saw the Da Vinci Code. So this is good for any at any point in the lesson. And it just kind of brings the art history to be a little bit more fun than watching a, a boring video or doing notes, you know? So it's a fun way to interact with art history. So like I said, you could swap out this artwork for any artwork. You could have a map where you say, you know, this is where the artist was born, but this is where the painting is now housed. Um, you know, you could use that as a time to talk to your students about how artwork moves around, how it's curated. So um, it's really good for art history as well. So moving on to the next one, this is one of my favorites. So I just did a short little mini project um, reviewing the elements of art with my middle school kids. So we didn't want to spend too much time drilling it into their head. So we just did a quick little project talking about shape, line, color, things that they learned in the past in elementary school. But here, they're going to put it all together. So we talked about space. We talked about collaboration. Um, so the students are practicing here on this page. So you can see that little rectangle on the bottom left corner they're practicing drawing. They can practice how to use maybe the highlighter pen, how to use an eraser. So this is just their practice page so they can change the size of the pen, go through all the colors, do whatever they want, okay? So there's the little examples in the right-hand corner. And then as we go on to the, oh, there's the teacher view so she can see everything that they're doing, which is awesome. Um, and then this actually pairs with the ah. following slide, which I think we skipped. So this is also part of the new Pear Deck template. It, it goes with the past, the last slide, the last slide that we did. Um, so they're going to take that zigzag line or that shape that they did, and they're going to draw it once inside of this frame. 
So here we're kind of talking about a simple line or shape and collaboration and being respectful and you know putting all of their artwork together, which in the teacher dashboard for this Sorry. is where you'll find the whole collaborative piece of artwork. So that's awesome. I love it. So that's just a fun introduction into the drawing tools and a good way to engage everyone in the class project. Awesome. Thank you, Carla. Aren't you guys, I, I wish I could see all of your comments coming in right now. Like, I totally wish I could see how excited you all are about this, uh, these new art templates. And there's more to come, more to come. All right, now we're going to move on to Jen, and she's going to introduce us to a couple of ways that she's used Pear Deck to do projects in her classroom, which is super exciting, and then also share with us a couple of the Pear Deck templates so, um, that we have now for music class. All right, you're up, Jen. I have been using Pear Deck for a couple of years. One of the projects that we do is this DJ project where they use a software program called Foundation Studio to create their own original song. And we talk about what a DJ is and what they used to be back in the 70s versus what they have become today. And we start talking about this concept of what is a DJ. And today we see a lot of um, we see a lot of these masks that DJs are wearing, and I do a little open-ended discussion about why they think that is, because a lot of them don't even question these things. They love Marshmallow, but they don't know why he wears a, a mask. And so it's kind of a fun way to get the discussion started. And then what we do is, in this particular project, I took the song by Marshmallow, um, Happier, and I played the song for them. Now, these kids have heard that song over and over, a very, very popular song, right? They had to listen to the song and then they have to use the drag option to choose one of these three options. Is he the singer? Is he the one who's writing or producing, but not the singer? Or is he both? And so a lot of students don't know that many times DJs aren't, aren't singers, they're producers, they're songwriters. And so that gives me a little bit of feedback as to whether they even are aware of that. And then the final thing that we do before I sort of release them to go and you know write their own song is I play for them the song Happier, except this time I pull all of the vocals out. So if you move on to the next slide, you'll see. I pull all the vocals out and I have them count how many times they hear musical changes in the song. So every time a new instrument comes in or any time a bunch of instruments are taken away, any musical change they hear, they have to keep track of that as they just listen to the musical part of the song. And at the end, they count how many changes they heard. And in this particular song, he makes some kind of musical change every eight bars for the entire song. And I sh it shows them that putting together a song, even if you're using electronic loops or if you're using drum machines, is not easy. In fact, there's a lot that goes into that. It's very calculated. And a lot of it is very mathematical. And they then have to go in and create their own song using this as sort of a model of how you put together an electronic piece of music. So it's really good to get some of their ideas um, and hear what they think and what they know and don't know going into it and give them a good model of a song that's created with a lot of electronics that's done really well. And why does it sound good? What is he doing that makes the music sound good? So this is sort of our pre-lesson to the actual composition lesson. I want to go back here for a second, Jen. I'm going to interrupt for just a quick second and just show sure. you that this is a Pear Deck website slide. So I know that a lot of you use videos like PE teachers. We're going to talk about how to use video in a little bit. You can embed a video into a Pear Deck. OK, so you can embed a YouTube, you can embed other activities like Flipgrid, Edpuzzle, Quizlet, quizzes, any website that you have them going to. Maybe you have a recording of the Cleveland Symphony Orchestra on YouTube that you want to send them to or you can embed any activity. So this can basically become the hub of your remote learning. Like you could make a whole deck for the week or the unit with formative assessment 
general information, your voice recorded to give them instructions, like then a video like this. So they can work completely through this on their own. And guess what? When they play this, it doesn't open another link. It actually plays right within the Pear Deck. So they don't even have to leave Pear Deck to do it. It's all in one place. And then you as the teacher have one place to go to to look at all their stuff. So I love this, Gina. I love this. I, I know. <laughs> this is a game changer. I love it. Okay, so here we got a couple of the new music templates. Now, I do a whole unit on music history. I do this every year. We usually do rock and roll history starting about the 1950s. We start talking about popular music and how it grew and how it became global. And when I start talking about bands from different places, um, geography is really lacking in a lot of our students. They just don't understand the location of where things happen. And um, and the significance of the Beatles coming to the United States, you know, like, what, why is that a big deal? Well, because they were in Liverpool, in England, in the United Kingdom. And so this gives me this opportunity to put something down on the map, add a audio clip, <laughs> like you were just talking about earlier, to it, and show them exactly on the map where that band or group started so that they are able to see how it became global and not just hear how it became global. So this is going to be amazing for my music history unit. And these draggables are awesome. You can see every single student and where they're at. So if my class really looked like this, <laughs> Jen, you think you're going to reteach <laughs> this one? <laughs> I, I didn't know I had students in Antarctica, but apparently, <laughs> <laughs> apparently awesome. I do. And this next one here, this is going to be really good, especially for elementary students where they're dragging and dropping the note to the correct place on the staff. There's something about that fine motor skill of physically putting the note where it's supposed to go that really helps with that memory. We in the old school days used whiteboards and, and whiteboard markers, you know. Um, today we can't share anything, especially with everything going on. So it's great that right on their device, they're going to be able to identify these notes and that we can see who knows where the notes are and who still needs work. This is a great tool. I think this is going to be used by a lot of our elementary teachers, especially. And some high school. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Some of them don't read music. They play really That's well, true. but they don't read music. So absolutely. I want to show something here in between, uh, cause Jen's going to talk about the drama, uh, templates as well is check this out on the teacher dashboard as they're working. I can see every student and what slide they are on. And then if I click on this, I can actually see the name of the students. So I can see every student, how they're working live through here so that I can keep track of all of that. And, you know, if I've I've done something live and then I've turned them into student pace mode for like 10 minutes and then I want to bring them back together, I can see who's close to getting done and if half my class is still way, way behind. So um, just a really helpful tool in the dashboard during student pace mode. All right, so let's go ahead and get started with this drama lesson. Uh, what I did with this is I created sort of a character study on the character of Evan and dear Evan Hansen. And when we're studying a character, the way that we learn about who the character is is not just by the things that they say through their dialogue, but in the case of a musical, the words of a song. But sometimes song lyrics can be very abstract and they can use metaphors and similes. and Sometimes it's hard to sift through that context for our students. So I took that we started with the song Waving Through a Window, had the students listen to the song and just just passively listen to it, get a once over on the song. And then I chose two different quotes from within the song. You can go ahead and pop over to the next one. I started with first I started with the very first phrase of the song, which uses a metaphor right out of the gate and asking the students if they can tell me what they think Evan is telling us about himself through this particular lyric. What is he revealing about himself? What do you think this means? This is a great conversation starter because when I did this before Pear Deck and it was just a discussion with my students, I would get that typical three, four kids that want to answer. The rest of the class sits there and doesn't answer. They agree with the three or four that raised their hand. And we really don't get a great discussion started because nobody really wants to say anything different than anyone else. So when I use this, I get some really amazing responses. And a lot of the best responses are from students that would never speak out loud or would never raise their hand. They come up with these ideas of what they think these lyrics mean. And then I will scroll through them 
and read them out loud, some of them to the students and say, well, what do you think about this? Do you think this is what he's really revealing? And that's gonna, it sparks this great conversation and everyone's sort of involved because they all feel that ownership of the conversation because they all participated in the conversation. Um, so we get some really great insights into these lyrics, which are what you need to understand a character. So these are just two examples of how I use that. And now to the Pear Deck templates. Um, <laughs> scene feedback. This is so, this could be used as a formative tool for um, even if someone's doing a monologue or they're doing dialogue with someone else, maybe their first time through giving feedback and offering up some things that you can maybe change or improve on. And you keep it very, you know, very simple. And then when you go back, maybe do it another month later, you can reread what, <laughs> what was said the first time around to see if you were able to make those changes a second time around. Um, I think sometimes giving feedback is hard, um, especially peer to peer, if you have to say it out loud, but when you can type it, you can be a little more clear in what you really mean to say. And so it can, it can come across differently when it's done um, through text. So I love this idea and I think this one's gonna be used quite a bit. Oh my gosh, this is so great. Um, now this, when you talk about- It's gonna be design, so bad. Gonna give someone an assignment. Oh, <laughs> well, some <laughs> of our students are amazing amazing um and if they have a stylus or they have a chromebook that has a touch screen or um you know where they can really get very detailed they can create some amazing things on these slides um so i feel like this is going to give those artistic kids uh, a chance to really showcase what their vision is for something and not me though because i am a terrible artist but someone better than me could design something really great on the costume design slide. So really? thank you, I'm at it. <laughs> <laughs> I want to wear that shirt. It's asymmetrical. <laughs> now this it's one, you wouldn't now. really want to, you wouldn't really, wouldn't really want to wear, uh, look at this in an overlay, right? You can't really get an idea, but you can split this out into individual screens so that you could do it in a grid view so that you can get a tile of just how they are. Oh my gosh. I know who did that one. So, um, <laughs> Goodness gracious. All right. And I can see the student deleted. Um, here's a student. I mean, in Pear Deck. Look at this. I know, um, right? That's Kate. Maybe. She's our graphic designer and she's kind of amazing. So I'm going to give her credit on Thank that you. one. So, but these are the different costume designs. So you can see that's probably mine. Mine is, there you go. <laughs> so, but really, really fun to be able to see what they can create. You guys should check out Twitter and see all the things that students are drawing because it's amazing. All right. All right, Shannon is going to talk a little bit about how she uses Pear Deck in the high school and virtual environment. And then, and then PE, don't worry, you're coming up next. Yeah, and look at me. I unmuted myself this time. All right. Um, <laughs> in, in visual art, like being able to articulate and justify visual choices, like with the right vocabulary, is really part of our essential skill set. Um, so that's like the fancy way of getting, saying that like you get your moody teenagers who say, uh, it's cool. Well, like I'm sure my cool is way different than their cool. Um, so getting them to pull in that vocabulary and like it's been mentioned several times, it's not just the two kids in the front that always raise their hand and the one that goofs off in the back that raises their hand, right? In this case, you're getting that feedback from everybody. And Pear Deck totally stopped the eye roll when I say, oh, we have a formative assessment because I don't have to say that. I get my formative assessments and it's fun. They don't even know that's what's happening. Um, so that's pretty awesome. Um, <clears throat> so this one that uh, Jen was drawing on, go back just half a second there. Oh, sorry. All right, so like in art, you know, when you're drawing conclusions, no, you're okay, you're fine. Um, sometimes we're literally drawing. And this was a slide that I used to kind of transition between the rule of thirds in photography and applying that to other things. Um, so this was a bell ringer and a formative assessment. So I kind of could immediately know, like, do they remember this from photography or do I have to reteach it when I'm doing this linoleum printing? Um, so a lot of the times our big ideas have to do with elements and principles of design which was really the inspiration for these next brand new fine arts uh, Pear Deck templates that I'm super excited to share with you tonight because they're ones that I've always hoped we had 
So now they're here. Um, and here is one. And that's um, because of Shannon and, and Carla four, that we have a lot of these. The four step <laughs> Um, so they go, these four go with the four steps of our criticism, which is describe, analyze, interpret, and judge. And it gives students a framework for assessing work without feeling intimidated or self-conscious. And Pear Deck just magnifies the fact that nobody has to be intimidated or feel self-conscious because they're doing this themselves. Um, and all of these templates, like you can swap out Basquiat's painting for a uh, Caravaggio painting. If you're studying something that's more realistic, um, you can change line to be shape um, and switch that around. Um, so these are all completely customizable and kids will leave you like little notes on these. And my favorite one most recently was Mrs. Fish. This is awesome. Can we do it again tomorrow? So, Aww. you know, you kind of can't go wrong when they like to do it. All right. So you can go ahead and go to the next template. This next one um, is more catered toward principles of design. So in this case, you're going to find the emphasis and drag the dot or the star. Um, we used stars today in my freshman level art one. And one thing I will say, like, don't pull up that result screen for kids to see till you give them a second because they'll start moving their stuff around. And we had stars floating all over. And it was good for a great laugh. Like, it was kind of a connecting point um, because it was silly. So um, if you want to go ahead and switch over to the next one. Yep. Um, so this one uh, is really about interpreting art or meaning. And one of my favorite things to do is say, hey, what would you title this? You know, and maybe I would even take off um, Frida's actual title on that slide so that they don't have any frame of reference at all, because you really get a lot of insight into, you know, what are they picking up on the visual cues? Um, you know, what? What did they pull out of this? And um, it makes a lot of really good discussion, especially when those answers are anonymous because we're all talking about these different things and nobody has to feel the pressure of being singled out. Um, so it also helps with building that trust relationship when you can use this stuff. Um, I did see in some of the comments, people are like, oh my gosh, this is overwhelming. I promise it's so user-friendly. Like I, went to the Pear Deck 101 and literally the next morning used Pear Deck in my classroom. Um, and so once you get in there, it's all real easy to, it's it's uh, very user friendly. So don't worry about that. Um, it also, if you wanna go ahead and switch to the fourth template, um, it also integrates really well with the virtual world because in theory, the kids don't have to split a screen. You just want them looking at the Pear Deck and interacting with the Pear Deck. You're the only one that has to try to keep track of split screens. And more than one device is not necessary. Um, I was so prepared, my Chromebook was dead. So I had like three screens. I had my Zoom so I could see the kids. I had my teacher dashboard and I had the Pear Deck student um, presentation and it worked fine. It was a little, you know, crazy keeping track of everything on my screen, but it wasn't really, you know, it was totally doable. Um, so all of these fine arts templates that were, um, introducing tonight. This is the last one uh, for tonight. And it's built around that final step of art criticism, which is um, your, your sort of judgment. And so we're asking the kids, would you put this in your room? And so they're really honest. And I got, yes, that would be so awesome over my bed, but my mom would make me sleep outside. So I don't think I can have it in my room after all. Like, um, so I am incredibly excited about these templates. Um, they are ready to literally just insert in any slide presentation or PowerPoint presentation that you already have existing. You don't have to reinvent the wheel. You can seamlessly customize it, like take out that spider and put in something else. And now you can use this, this slide with whatever is a complement to your learning um, in your classroom at the time. And then you can go ahead and go out there and use it tomorrow. It's really easy. You get all those formative assessments. You can make the connections with the kids. Um, and you can also get that, that interaction between them that you may not have otherwise because it's not those two kids that always raise their hand. So um, before I'm done for tonight, I just want to thank, say thanks for being here tonight. And please, please show us on social media how you're using these things in your classroom because that's the best way to do this is share ideas with each other. 
Absolutely. Thank you, Shannon. That's amazing. Um, I am not a PE teacher, but I am going to be presenting a couple of these PE templates. Um, I will say I have a couple of teachers that I've been working with this year. We've been doing a lot of video, um, putting in a video of you demonstrating yourself to a screencastify or a video of yourself um, demonstrating how to do an exercise and then follow up with a slide of how many were you able to do. That's a really great way to be able to connect with your students. And like I said earlier, also, compare that data. So if you could only do four setups at the beginning of the quarter, maybe they can do 12 by the end. And so I'm going to take you through a couple of our PE templates that we built. There's a whole bunch of them. Um, but how do you feel when you're done exercising? And why do you feel that way? No kid is going to want to share. Well, no adult anyway, at least I wouldn't. <laughs> How do you feel when you're done exercising? I, is, I might not want to share this opinion, but when I'm along with everybody else, it is a great way to be able to share that. Now, I love this one because it shows the versatility of the drawing slide as well. So check this out. I can say like this, and then I can also do a typing tool. So I can say uh, maybe because I work out too hard. We're going to go with that for today, people. I'm just saying. Okay, so we're just going to go with that. That's why. It's not because I don't work out. It's because I work out too hard. Okay, so all right. So this is the, the beauty of this because you can have students highlight something on the screen and then type in something else. They can do if you're working on vocabulary or anything like that, they can do a fill, uh, fill in the blank or labeling parts. So they can do all of that on this slide. The next one I want to show you is this one, just getting that classroom discussion. I think we talked about that, but you know, did you think about having your students apply these concepts to other activities? You know, if you're teaching, you know, weightlifting, how does that apply to other activities in your life? Um, oh, when my parents moved, I could help them because I weightlift, you know, and I didn't get sore or, you know, whatever it is, just getting those examples from your students and always applying it to real life. And then um, this is the third one I'm going to show is just the importance of body composition. So this is in here, guys, but you can change this text to say anything. Okay, so if I'm doing a unit on peer pressure, maybe I take all of this out and I put something else or maybe I say list your favorite recipe that your mom makes and they could type it in or insert it. So it's they can type it in or they can draw it or whatever they want. So this is a really, really good way to be able to connect with your students in health, PE, um, any of those places as well. All right. Now, one thing I want to show is that I can also, so that's, that's the gist of the templates. And I did show you, um, I'll show you what the website slide looks like real quickly. So this is the Pear Deck website slide. If you have them linked to a, a website versus a um, video, they can actually scroll through, click on any of the links in the website, and it is completely functional. So really, really wait, great way. See, it's Pear Timber. Told you. All right. And you can go and see any of these things. So um, I'm going to stop student pace mode. So remember I showed you that you could start and stop student pace mode. I'm going to stop student pace mode. And then my students will snap right back to the slide that I'm on. So you saw that there. My students snap back. And then I can go through all of these different slides. Um, I'm just going to tell you about this one. At the end of a lesson, at the end of a lesson, you can um, end the lesson. Let me show you that from the presentation screen. I can go down here and click on end and it will send my students a copy of all of these slides with their answers on them. So talk about formative assessment. We do so many formative assessments in the digital world and then our students have nothing to go back to to look at. And so this is a great way to be able to send this to them if you're doing some interactive notes or anything like this, a great way to be able to send all of this out to your students so they have something to refer back to, okay? So I just um, wanted to do that. All right, we have like, oh, I thought we had four minutes. We have like two minutes left. So, but I do wanna see if there's any questions. Um, Danielle and Caroline, if you have any or you wanna pop one up on the screen, um, if there's a popular question. Um, I'll, I'll tell while I'm waiting on a couple of questions to come in, or you can drop it in our chat. Um, while I'm waiting on a couple of questions to come in, I just want to say, take it slow. I know that this can be overwhelming, but like Shannon said, I love Pear Deck because it's so simple, even if you're not techie. All right. Sometimes in the arts, we don't use tech as much as some of the other places, but just go in and dive in and do it. 
We have daily live trainings on our Pear Deck website. So you are welcome to sign up for one of those trainings. There's a Pear Deck 101 and essential tools for remote learning. And those are fabulous webinars. And then obviously we would love to provide this for your school. And we do custom webinars for school districts um, when they purchase a Pear Deck license. So any questions? Okay, I see one here who says... Mrs. LC, do your students have to create their own accounts with their emails? Also, is there a limit for the projects they can create with the free version? Um, what I do is, I was actually responding to that. I was typing an answer to that on YouTube. Um, they sign in with their Google account. So they don't have to do a sign up. When you go to foundation, There, you just click log in. You choose Google as your login and that's it. You're just, you're logged in with Google. Um, I have not had any limitation on length of songs. There are some premium sounds that are in there, but there are literally hundreds upon hundreds that are free. It's the most extensive free program I've ever used. And they sometimes put out these limited edition packs of sounds, which are great. So you might have, you know, 20, 40, 60 new sounds that are out for like two or three months and you can use them in a song and they'll retire that and bring out new ones. So if I use foundation this year and I go back and use it next year, it's like a whole new thing. Like the main sounds are still there, but they've added a bunch of new things. So it keeps staying fresh. And so kids can come back year after year and create. So yeah, totally Pear Deck, um, Pear Deck itself is just single sign on through Google, which is really nice or Microsoft. Um, so that's really nice thing about that. All right. Where do I find the student responses saved after a class has ended? You just go to PearDeck.com. You log in, you click on sessions. I don't have time to dive into that, but we will do that in some of our sessions that we do on our live webinars. Um, you just go to paradeck.com, you go to sessions and you can pull up the teacher dashboard and you can export their responses to a Google sheet. Now drawing and draggable slides do not show up in a Google sheet, right? They don't show up in an Excel template, but open-ended response, uh, multiple choice number slides, those all show up in a Google sheet or you can always go back to that teacher dashboard, sort them by student first name, and you can go in and review all of their data all together. So any other questions here? All right, I've got 801. So we might have gone but seriously, go check out the website, sign up for the daily trainings. Uh, before we go, I'm going to say go tweet and tag all of us at Coop Tech 05, at Mrs. LC Music, at Carla Ganim, and at LHS underscore art, please follow all of us. Uh, we would really, really appreciate that. And if you go to paradeck.com, you can also go in and click and you will get a free trial. So free trial of Pear Deck. Go in, play with it, check it out. Um, the nice thing is anything you keep, anything you create is in Google Slides. So you keep it. So anything you create, um, you, you've got it. So go in, try it out, try it with your students and uh, make sure you tag us. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. We hope you have a fantastic evening. Happy Pear Timber. Go follow Pear Deck on Twitter. We have all kinds of contests going on right now. Um, and we will look for your tweets to come up here in just a little bit. So can't wait to see you later and see what you create. Uh, go Related Arts. Super excited to have you all in our Pear Deck family. Bye.